China, from Porter House to Home. On the last episode, you saw us put primer on every single wall and floor in the house. We also painted the ceiling in a flat white ceiling paint. On this episode, we have a lot going on. We tear out the shower and the master bath, we replace walls, we add new walls, we tear down some old ones, reconfigure the house to how we want it, and we start working on some plumbing and electrical projects. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. So we've begun some demolition work on this wall here. We're coming out of the family room in the kitchen. Uh, the problem is we're going to open this all up so this can be a dining room instead of a bedroom. But the issue is there's a lot of electrical in this wall. So I have to reroute all the electrical. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm cutting some new boxes in. Same thing on the inside here. Putting in a hole for a new box for the lighting to reroute the electrical. But it's coming along. bedroom the closet wall is being demolished half of it and the plan is to make it so it's a single door closet and then this whole part will be opened up that way there's room for a woman's dresser to fit because with the bed in here the room's so small there wouldn't be enough room so that's the plan with that all the interior walls of this house are just these tiny two by threes. And in the case of in here, the ceiling is finished right under there. So it'll make it easy for us to move the wall.
while we have the dumpster we're trying to clean up a little bit more of the property that was not cleaned up but they didn't keep the hoarding to the inside of the house either all right at least 20 tires strewn about and why you would keep used disgusting bald tires who knows it's not like the guy had the ability to change tires here so unknown why he kept them dumpsters filling up quickly all right working down in the basement now i'm starting to fix the plumbing I said i already identified a couple leaks but uh, Right here we have a line that runs off of the cold water supply that used to go up to the refrigerator over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that off and cap it. I've already capped off the lines going to the kitchen. And the reason I'm doing capping off some of the areas is that way I can actually turn on the water to the other areas of the house that are ready. Like we're going to be um, trying to put together a bathroom to be able to use while we're here. Uh, like the uh, once we get a floor down in the main bathroom, we're going to start using it. So I want to be able to get the water moving throughout the house, but we have to address all the problems first. So I'm going to start by capping some stuff off and adding some shutoff valves to the other areas of the house. So I've got my new tubing cutter. Try it out here. So you're supposed to be able to just use this uh, flow guard, and this is all CPVC pipe down here in the basement, you're supposed to be able to use this all-in-one cement without any primer, which is okay, but I still like using some cleaner, especially on the old pipe. I'm just putting a cap on here, so put a little cleaner on there. by no means a plumber, just a home plumber. But you want to coat both surfaces, get it on there, make sure it bottoms out, twist a little bit, and we'll hold it for a few seconds just to make sure it doesn't pull out. And then that needs a solid six hours for uh, hot water and an hour for cold water. So. I'm just gonna let it sit overnight, do its thing, and we'll come back and try everything up tomorrow. So I'm gonna put in a couple shutoff valves in the hot and cold line here that run to the runs to the master bathroom and the rough end for the basement. But that way, that can be shut off completely um, for testing purposes. Here's another fun one. That hole was in the pipe, like blown into the pipe. Not sure what caused that, but I cut it out and fix it here. We have this crack that runs this whole length of this pipe here. So I'll try to cut it off here and redo this whole piece. Alright, I'm going to put a couple more shutoff valves on the hot and cold line here. These are the lines that supply 
the main bathroom on the first floor. That way, if something ever happens in there, we'll have a way to shut it off from down in the basement. tacked up here, make it look a little nicer than it is now. All right, it's the next day, getting ready to turn the water on. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut off these valves. Now for the big moment. You ready up there? See what happens. Now that was uneventful. So our cold water has been turned on. Go ahead and I'm going to open the valve going in the hot water tank. So, if I try to turn on the water going to the bathroom, this is what happens. So, we definitely have a few more issues to deal with. Alright, so after replacing some broken fittings, where they obviously froze and cracked with the CPVC lines, so we had to replace all of this right here. Had to replace this fitting here where it goes up to the toilet. We are in business. So water is turned on to everywhere in the house except the master bathroom, which I have valves installed over here to shut that off going this way. Just because there's open pipes going to the shower and everything. But so far, so good. So now we can go ahead and try to fire up the hot water heater, see if it works. Yeah. All right, well, we'll go ahead and <laughs> click on the hot water tank, see what happens there. I want to push the thing down so the shower head doesn't come on. Well, of course it's. It's frozen. That might not even be on. Go ahead and see what happens. Ooh. Oh, it's on. Sweet. Just a little a year's worth of crap getting out of the pipe. So the electrical wiring in the house is like you'd find in a mobile home and I don't care for it at all and the way you can usually tell is there's no screws anywhere on here. And I'll show you what it looks like. So when you take it off you'll notice there's no box, the drywall comes completely up to it. Not sure why that one doesn't have a bottom screw. So in this case, there's just one coming in and one going out. A lot of times there's up to three wires. I pried the plastic back off of here. You can see these wires are just pushed in here. And that makes a cut in the wire. That's the only thing that's making a connection. So 
I mean, I don't even see how these are code, but apparently they are. So I'm gonna rip this out of here and put a regular box in. So I just need to take a drywall saw and carefully cut the hole bigger to fit a, it's called a old work box. Once we get that in there, we can wire in a traditional outlet. So what I do is push this in here, and then when I turn the screw, this little tab comes up behind the drywall and draws it forward and holds it into the wall. I can strip the wires and make my connections. Say it's not even the green drywall. Yeah. Lived more rat's nest, mice, whatever. Beautiful.
So the framing has been completed for the new den area in the front of the house. We're gonna do a little bit more securing and then we'll be ready for some drywall. So in this episode, we got a lot of stuff accomplished. We got uh, a lot of construction done, including framing in the new wall for the dining room and framing in the new wall for the den on the front of the house and uh, reshaping the wall in the master bedroom closet. Also got all the plumbing fixed in the basement. So we have water that can be turned on to the house when necessary. And as you saw, we had some leaks that needed to be repaired. We also got the master bathroom all ripped out. It's ready to be uh, remodeled with the new stuff. And the main bathroom in the house is also ready to be fixed. And we'll be starting working on that in the coming weeks. In the next video, we'll be working on the HVAC system. So until next time, hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Thanks.